Okay, um, at the bottom of page 18 of your notes, we're gonna take some time to talk about the shapes of distributions. Um, these will come up um, a lot, actually, even later in the course, that'll help us, um, we'll be looking at data and knowing what the shape is, actually, based on some summaries. So we'll kind of be going in the other direction. Um, but these are some important things to notice here. So, um, the first one we're gonna look at is symmetric and uniform. Now these are all sketches that I'm doing, okay? You don't have to be super exact, but symmetric and uniform um, essentially means that the data is got some symmetry, okay? Moving from left to right and it's uniform. Now, uniform generally speaking means they're all exactly the same height. Oop, little wonky bar there, sorry. Um, however, you could call it uniform even if you had a bar that was, oh, say, just a little bit higher than another one or one that was a little bit lower. Um, that is not, um, I can make this one just a little bit lower. That would still be considered symmetric and, and relatively uniform. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, okay? Um, symmetric and unimodal. Okay, so again, we've got some symmetry going on and unimodal means there's like one high spot. And so that's typically gonna need to fall toward the middle, but it doesn't mean that it's perfectly symmetrical. So um, I'm gonna put some bars in here to the right and then on the other side, again, we might have something similar in shape and scope, but it's not perfect, okay? We've got some symmetry, one, highest point. Symmetric and bimodal, again, is very similar to sy symmetric and unimodal, except bimodal, as you might imagine, we're going to have kind of like two highest points. So I'm going to sketch those in first. Um, and then we've got some symmetry going on. So maybe we've got something like this happening. Again, not perfect, but kind of close and then maybe something like that. Okay, so again, sketches, rough sketches. Um, skewed to the right. So when data is skewed to the right, generally that means, and I'm gonna draw the tallest ones first. Oop, those should be a little bit more equal in width. Sorry about that. Okay, so skewed to the right means that it kind of trails off to the right. Okay, so the slope is kind of going downhill. It can rise pretty quick, um, and you may or may not have those bars on the left side, um, but skewed to the right means there's a high point and then it slopes off to the right. Skewed to the left does exactly the opposite of that. So you've got this high point here on the left, and then um, you start trailing off, going downward to the left. So again, just some rough, rough, really rough, quick sketches. All right, so based on that, if you go back up to the top of your page where we did the histogram for the ticket prices for NFL home games, what shape is it? Hopefully you determine that that one is definitely skewed to the right, okay? All right, moving on to the next page. This is one of those times I'm going to have you pause the video and do a little bit of work on your own. So um, we're first going to fill in the frequency table, um, starting with zero as the lower limit for the first class, okay? Zero is the lower limit for the first class with a class width of two inches. So remember, that class width comes into play when you're talking about the lower limit to lower limit. Okay, lower limit to lower limit. So if we go down the way and we get two inches, we would fill in every two inches along the way there. Okay, and then um, this zero would go up to how many inches are just below two inches. So we're gonna put in like 1.99. Okay, and then two up to not quite four, but 3.99. Four, not up to six exactly, but 5.99, etc. So we'll fill those in. And then this last one, 
would go up to 11.99, okay? Now what I want you to do is pause the video and I want you to fill in the frequencies. So using the data here, how far an origami frog has jumped, okay, using all this data here, how many appear in each of those different classes. Um, then find the relative frequency and the cumulative rel relative frequency, and then I will catch you on the other side. Okay, so hopefully your table matches mine. Um, so what is the sample size? So you can go back and count each one of those data values or much faster, you can find the sum of these frequencies that are listed right there and you will find that the sample size, again, symbol N is 20. Okay, what is the variable? So what is it that we were measuring? Okay, we were measuring the distance jumped Okay, in inches. And then I didn't ask it on paper, but I'm gonna ask it now. So what kind of variable is that? Okay, um, again, it's numerical and those numbers mean something. So it's quantitative. Now is it discrete, countable, or is it continuous? Theoretically, infinitely um, smaller measurements could be taken. Okay, that one is going to be continuous because again, with the length and with the proper tools, we could continue to measure smaller and smaller increments of inches. Um, what does the cumulative relative frequency tell you? The cumulative relative frequency, so this last column here, okay? Um, and this is telling us the proportion in this case, if you answered as percentages, then you would say the percentage of frogs that jumped at most that many inches. Okay, so for example, if we focus on this one right here, the 0.9 that I'm drawing an arrow at, okay, that would mean that the proportion of frogs that jumped at most 7.99 inches is 0.9, or 90% of them jumped at most 7.9 inches. Um, you could also say jumped less than 8 inches and still get the same um, idea across. Okay, and then last but not least, we're supposed to create a frequency histogram. So I cheated and I did a little bit of work ahead of time. Um, so I've got my scale and stuff here drawn out. Um, so what are some things that we need? We do need a title. And so I'm gonna throw on a title here of um, distance jumped by origami frogs. Okay, um, and again, along the bottom, I've labeled inches and I've got the lower class limits. We do need to include the 12, which would be the start of the next class um, in terms of labeling. And then in, for frequencies, the highest was 11. So I decided to go up to 12 and count by twos. So as we um, go through that first class had 11 in it. And so 11 frogs come to there. Um, the next class had four. The next one had zero, so remember, we can have a height of zero in the middle. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, so we're not gonna fill anything there. Um, and then the next one had three, so in the six to eight group. Um, and then we had one and one going to the others. So there is our histogram, okay? Um, so what is the shape of that histogram? Okay, what is the shape of that histogram? How would you describe it? Hopefully you will say that it is skewed to the right. Okay, and then interpret the histogram. So again, what is something that you can say about um, what this tells you? Again, lots of things you can say. Um, what kind of stands out to me is that the vast majority of the frogs um, jumped less than two inches. The 
but there are other things you can say as well. You could say, no frog jumped between four and six inches. I mean, you can certainly do that if that's what you wanna do. Um, you can say, you know, very few frogs jumped more than six inches. Uh, again, there's lots of room um, for interpretation and lots of things you can pick out. Okay, um, before I wrap up this video, I do wanna make a mention on the next page. Um, we've got some graphical representations of data that aren't particularly good. That is one of the things we're going to discuss during our um, in-person meeting times online. So would you please go ahead, turn the page um, to page 20, look at those graphs and decide um, what's, what's maybe not so good about it, what makes it, uh, and maybe you think it's just fine and that's okay too. Tell why you think it is good or why you think it's not good. Um, what could be done to improve it. And then that's something that we'll be discussing as a group later on.